5.45 p.m. Eastern Time once more and you find yourself in front of your TV set for another edition of 5.45 Live, BCTV's weekly media roundup. We'll take the next 15 minutes heading into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news to jam-pack your afternoon with local content, which will include all this week's uh, Brattleboro Select Board drama, the DEW Bid Award for the Police Fire Station Project, uh, their lawsuit against Carbon Harvest. We'll also uh, talk a little bit about the Kyle Gilbert Memorial and the problems there that happened this week. Get a flashback to the weekend with our BCTV Weekender that includes uh, the Ride for Heroes, Soapbox Derby, and plenty more. There was a healthcare forum this week. We've also got a calendar breakdown for upcoming events, uh, which includes the African uh, Dance and Drum Festival and plenty more. So be sure to stick with us right here on 545 Live. Brattleboro has brought a lawsuit against Don McClure. Turn it over to Town of Brattleboro has brought a lawsuit against Don McCormick, one of the founders of Carbon Harvest. Carbon Harvest had defaulted on a loan that had been provided to it by the town and that the personal guarantor of that loan had been subject to a civil suit. McCormick had plans to develop a closed-loop agriculture and energy system near the Wyndham County Solid Waste District, but Carbon Harvest went bankrupt. McCormick borrowed $40,000 for his business, and the town wants him to repay about $14,000. Welcome back to this August 23rd, 2013 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden here to host our Friday edition of 545 Live. We'll get the full 15 minutes to break down all of this week's happenings, uh, including footage from the Brattleboro Select Board meeting. Uh, their regularly scheduled meeting on Tuesday garnered much attention. We'll get our footage from BCTV's coverage in a moment, but first, uh, that was a clip off of the Reformers Tout.com channel, tout.com slash Brat Reformer. You don't even need the old borough, it's just Brat Reformer. Uh, that's courtesy of Howard Weiss Tisman, who's been posting, as have uh, all Brattleboro Reformer reporters, uh, using their smartphones to tout.com to add video content so they can upload as they report from the field. Uh, that was Select Board Chair David Gardenstein talking about the board's suit against carbon harvest. For more on that, you can head to reformer.com and uh, check out the full article from Howard Weiss Tisman, or you can see all of those videos as they're posted. Again, once more, tout.com slash Brat Reformer. Now, speaking of the Brattleboro Select Board, uh, there was more than one hot button issue at this week's meeting, and our BCTV Channel 10 report has got the scoop, including the police fire upgrade, which has had everyone talking since last October when a town meeting special uh, representative gathering uh, voted to approve the $14 million upgrade. We'll get uh, all the details here as part of our Channel 10 report. This is our weekly web release now, which includes not only content from Brattleboro's select board meeting and all of the other local meetings in Brattleboro, including the Development Review Board, Town School District Board and BUHS Board, DRB, Planning Commission, uh, all like that, but also footage from BCTV seven other surrounding communities, Vernon, Guilford, Dummerston, Putney, Newfane, Townsend, and Jamaica, where we get select board coverage there as well. We jam it all into a neat little special. It happens to be narrated by yours truly, so you'll get to hear my voice once more, for better or for worse. That's enough pre-roll here. That's probably ever, I've probably already talked longer than this clip even is. Let's take a look. Channel 10 report, Brattleboro Select Board, it's all here. For this week's Channel 10 report, we'll waste no time in getting to last night's Brattleboro Select Board meeting with an array of hot topics making the roster, including the proposed Nelson Withington skating rink upgrades, as yesterday afternoon the board interviewed candidates for the rink's committee before convening an early executive session. Good evening, this is Tim Johnson, the Brattleboro Select Board uh, just reconvening behind me. They interviewed candidates for the Living Memorial Park Ice Rink Committee. And while a new compressor for the lucrative Parks and Rec enterprise could run as high as 800 grand, the $14 million price tag on the town's police and fire facility upgrade project has set it apart as the issue of choice in local politics, with the Select Board announcing at last night's meeting that it would award DEW Construction the bid. DEW had technology, resources, and assets to help us provide communication tools to the folks in, in town that were significantly better than the other firms that we interviewed. 
But with seven other towns to consider in BCTV's service territory, we'll move on and head north to Jamaica where last week's meeting made headlines after a resident was accused of accosting a town employee at their recycling facility and berating them over rising costs in the program, prompting the select board debate as to the town's authority to revoke the recycling privileges of their residents. How should we handle uh, when someone comes up and uses abusive language is the access to the transfer station a privilege or a right of citizenship in Jamaica? From there, we'll move on to New Fane, where the town's Grout Pond and the conditions of the aging dam responsible for holding back the waters of the 20-acre area are under state review, with the municipality likely facing half the cost of the state's assessed repair needs and the pond's private property owner responsible for the other half, a fact that was met with full support at last week's regularly scheduled meeting. Clearly something needs to be done, and we're, we're as concerned about it as you are, and in terms of uh, integrity of the dam and the road, and we want to just um, help in any way we can and work things out. Well, that will launch into our BCTV Weekender. This is uh, now four days past, but each week BCTV uh, releases a short video summary of the weekend's happenings. It'll go out uh, Tuesday morning on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash TV. You can catch up on uh, what you missed this weekend or perhaps even see an event you were present at. It's all jam-packed into a cute little two-minute clip, and we've got it right here. The Weekender starts now. Past weekend's edition starts in Brattleboro with the Soapbox Derby which has, since 2008, given locals the chance to compete in a freeform craft creation competition with little more than a handful of rules and anything but a motor admitted as construction material, with residents again gathering this year to downhill race their sometimes breakless backyard creations at speeds of up to 40 miles an hour, providing ample entertainment and video footage. From there, we'll move to Newfane, where this year's Wyndham County History Fair boasted historical exhibits from across the area, Civil War reenactments, antiques and handcrafts, even courthouse tours with Judge John Wesley and Sheriff Keith Clark. This weekend also marked the final performance for Circus Smirkus, whose summer of camps and productions found their way into a news special after BCTV young newsmakers camper extraordinaire Amelia Connolly profiled the renowned youth circus on the evening news. The dazzling athletes can be very young, 10 years old at the youngest, but they are all great at their act. All kids may be away from home for a while, but they all think running away to join the circus was worth it. All right, we'll move on now and talk upcoming events as uh, we've summed up some of the past events from this week. Let's uh, break it down on uh, all this weekend's fun, and for that we'll go into our fancy green screen setup, which is again hosted by me, at least for now. Uh, our video calendar is released on our website and at youtube.com slash TV every Thursday where you can uh, get updates, interactive updates on happenings uh, in the coming days with interviews, video clips, and the like, and uh, the African Drum and Dance Festival at the Stone Church just down the street, which has just kicked off, uh, has played a large role in addition to the Rock River Revival. Let's roll the clip. Welcome to BCTV's calendar coverage. I'm Roland Boyden uh, here for another edition of our Thursday webisode. Talking about uh, the weekend's upcoming events, we'll break down uh, all of the happenings with video clips. And if you're watching this on youtube.com slash Brattlebro TV, I'll mention that annotations turned on on your YouTube browser and make these uh, little uh, links clickable as long as I can figure out where to point. Uh, so just make sure your annotations in the uh, bottom right corner of your YouTube screen are turned on and you'll be able to uh, get links to uh, our video and also to uh, the respective websites of these organizations. We can get more information. Let's launch right into it with a brief mention that uh, the Southern Vermont Scrabble Club is meeting this and every Thursday at 6 p.m. in just a matter of hours at the Marlboro Graduate Center. Uh, you can uh, get more information on that by looking up the Southern Vermont Scrabble Club at ibrattlebro.com. We'll move on now and talk about uh, one of this weekend's biggest events here in Brattlebro. I'm going to get better at this pointing thing. There we go. You can click uh, any one of these uh, daily links uh, to the African Dance and Drum Festival here in Brattlebro at the Stone Church. Uh, just north of the post office on Main Street here in town. The festival encompasses dance classes, drum classes, and a big performance on Saturday night. We started with uh, bringing Caro Diallo uh, here from Senegal 
who is an incredible master dance teacher, and he inspired us to uh, create this festival. Uh, it all starts tomorrow, Friday, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and will go through the evening, all day Saturday, and then it continues on Sunday. And all the information about the classes and festivals on that website, africandancevt.com. You can head to that website mentioned to find out more about each of the, the individual events or get involved with all of this weekend's African Drum and Dance Festival. And uh, if you like what you see, you can continue to be involved. There's classes all the way through the fall. We've got a flyer that will pop up on the screen. This says a little bit more information on some of Kara's instruction. Uh, in the meantime, I'll move on and block just a tiny bit of Thursday. I apologize for those of you interested in the 20 seconds. Still, in the meantime, let's head chronologically uh, further down the Saturday slot here on the 24th at 5 p.m. where uh, in Putney, Vermont, Sun Farm and the Clean Energy Collective welcome local businesses and individuals to the opening of Vermont's first community-owned solar garden in Putney. That includes a guided tour and a array of other information. There's gonna be a uh, Vermont table catering, games, face paintings, you can bring the kids, all like that. We've got more info, so let's hit the video. Community solar works in the same manner as home arrays with one key difference. Rather than many individual arrays located on homes, communities work together to build one large array. Because the array feeds into the grid, it doesn't need to be located at any one particular person's home. The electricity is sent through the existing power lines, requiring no changes to a residence. Because the array is located remotely, those who rent are able to participate in community solar. Similarly, those who do not receive enough sunlight in their homes can also take advantage of the community array. All right, we'll move on now and talk about Sunday's second annual Rock River Revival Parade, uh, the Newfane, South Newfane Williamsville uh, march along Dover Road to commemorate the struggles and triumphs of Vermonters in the face of adversity during Tropical Storm Irene. Now, two years past, uh, this is now in its second year, and thus for the second time, hardworking BCTV content manager Jeff Mastrioni will head out to gather multi-camera coverage of the event this year, joined by my often co-captain William Joseph Bushy to get you a little more video footage but in the meantime we've got some clips interviews and clickable links to find out more let's roll it welcome to the first rock river revival parade and we're here to celebrate recovering from irene a year ago today and we're calling it the rock river revival project August 25th, starting at noon, come to the Rock River Revival Parade on Dover Road in South Newfane and support the volunteer fire departments of the town of Newfane. And keep abreast of all the area's events. Yeah. 